Hey guys, Noir here, back with JP Dokkan, and today we're going to do an analysis of the uh, newly announced uh, Dokkan Fest Kefla for JP. Uh, she's coming out relatively as of this recording, probably in a day or so. The data download should be actually tonight, and then the banner should be out on Thursday in the here in North America. So um, the, the official Doke on Twitter released all the info and the super tax. I'm not going to go through the super tax because I'm pretty sure most of you have seen it. If not, go check it out. It, as usual, super tax look freaking awesome. But uh, we're going to just actually analyze Kefla as she is and see how, you know, is she good? Is she bad? Is she mediocre? Uh, but first and foremost, shout out to Goresh, uh, homie, the homie Goresh, for uh, translating this and providing us all the info. And I know Talon did as well, but I couldn't find his... Uh, his uh, translations directly, so uh, this is the first one I found. All right, so let's just quickly look at her her kit and then see what they did, what I like, what I don't like, at least on paper. Um, again, it, my thoughts might change when I actually pull her and use her on respective teams, but uh, here it is. So Kefla's lead skill is uh, U6, key 3, 170 HP attack and defense, which makes sense. And um, in that case, a rip hit, because he's just fodder now. Like, okay. Um, the second leader skill category is Rapid Growth, which is 3 key, 150 type HP attack and defense. Now, because it's 3 key, 150, that speaks to me that there's a lot of um, units in that category. I have no faith in having Akatsuki make the categories as good as I think they would be, or at least uh, to put the appropriate people in the categories. But um, just looking at the percentages, because usually if they give a lower percent or more even percent, it's because the category is relatively big. So there's a lot of units you can throw in there. Could be a bunch of like young, uh, youth Gohans, young Gohans, um, Go Tanks, um, you know, Go uh, Go Ten and Trunks. Like it could be those units. I'm not sure who else they would be in there, but we'll find out when we get the down data download and, and really analyze it. All right, so her attack she. Raises attack, which means she stacks, and then immense damage and lowers defense. All right, so her passive is uh, defense 100%, attack 100% when launching a super, which means do not put her in the first slot because she has no defense, so she can't take a hit at least in the, in the in her base state. Because after she does her super, that's when she gets the extra defense and attack. So uh, most likely you'll put her in slot two if you're going to keep her on rotation. Okay, and then she gains an additional 50% attack and a high chance to evade the enemy's attacks when collecting six or more key spheres. So it's similar to the Super Saiyan 2, Vegeta, and Goku, um, the Dokkan Fest. And then transforms when conditions are met. So this is past transformation, third turn, start of the third turn of the battle. Okay, fine. Um, her link sets, which is important because that really tells you how viable she is on all the teams that she's on. She's on a lot of categories, as you can see. But she got Super uh, Saiyan Warrior Race, uh, Battlefield Divas, Fuse Fighter, Power Bestowed by God, Warrior of Universe 6, Tournament Power, Fierce Battle. All appropriate links for her. Like, if you told me these were her links, I would completely believe you. Um, of course, categories now Rapid Growth, Universe 6, Peppy Gals, Universe uh, Survival Saga, Patara, Full Power, Transformation Boost, Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, Last Resort. So, a lot of carries, categories. She'll definitely be, be able to be used on a lot of different teams. Uh, I'll get more in depth with that later. Uh, and then a super attack when she transforms to Super Saiyan's Kefla. Same thing. It raises attack and lowers defense on super. Uh, I'm going to give everything I got. Defense 150 and attack 150 when launching a super. So again, slot 2. Gain an additional 50% attack and a high chance to evade enemy attack when collecting 6 or more key spheres. Oh, well, you could probably put her in slot 1. And if you've got at least 6 key spheres, then she has a high chance. I think that's 50% chance to dodge and transform conditions are met, which is on the fifth turn, if your HP is above 60% or above, you will transform. So there's the uh, V jumps are right. It's two passive transformations. And uh, links change from Saiyan Warrior Race to Super Saiyan. Makes sense. She goes Super Saiyan. And Super Saiyan 2, again, Super Attack stays the same, raises attack, lowers defense. All right, so her passive now is key two plus two, defense and attack 160 when launching a super, high chance to evade enemies' attacks, which means I guess you could put her in slot one, uh, so you got 50% chance to dodge, but the, she'll gain that extra defense 160 and attack 160 when she launches. So uh, a situational example would be if you're facing against UI Goku in the Legendary Goku event, if 
He's got like five attacks in the first slot. More than likely, it's up to you if you want a chance to put her there, or you put her on slot two and, you know, she can tank those remaining hits. So that's kind of what I mean by slot one and slot two uh, situational analysis. Um, and then last part is she performs an additional super attack when collecting six or more key spheres. Pretty cool. And her links, the links don't change. Then she has an active skill, which is uh, when she's facing up against pure Saiyans, which is like 70% of the game. Or Universal Survivor Saga Enemy, which is, uh, I mean, together that's a good chunk. That's like 75% of uh, content. You could use her active skill. Cool. You know. Um, and then she changes physical key spheres to strength, which then means, and then all attacks are effect effective against all types, which is pretty cool. So... What do I think of her overall? I think she's good. I don't think she's on... I think she's like a tier below like the Beerus's and the, the Strength Coolers. Like she's just like at that... She's good, really good, but not like in the upper echelon. At least that's my opinion. Um, because she's got two passive transformations, which is I'm kind of tired of passive transformations because it's a very linear process. Um, uh, and, and for her, there's the restrictions aren't like there are no bad restrictions, and that's a good and bad thing. And I'll explain that in a second here. Like with, let's say, in future Gohan, the uh, the intel I mean, intelligence one, he stays. He's like kind of a support, and then he transforms into a hard hitting, stacking attacker. But the requirement is having a trunks. Now, 90% of the time, you're gonna take a trunks with you. And so he's going to transform. But you have the option to say, okay, you know what? I don't want him to transform. I want him to stay as a um, support unit, so I won't take a Trunks. It's still, a, like, not the best thing. Like, I would prefer an active skill, like, that kind of thing to deter dictate whether or not I transform and change the play style of support to hard hitter or vice versa. But here, because it's passive and it's not so bad, she's literally meant to be a hard hitter through and through. And, and the... The slow buildup of going from base to Super Saiyan to Super Saiyan 2. I mean, it's cool and and the transformations are awesome. It's just that, as my buddy once said, it's garbage that I have to wait five turns, seven turns, ten turns to play with the card I really want to play with. You know, from his perspective, that makes a lot of sense. So, like, she's basically a hard hitter. And in that regard, she's just kind of meh to me. There's nothing unique about her. Other than like, okay, the gimmick of uh, six orbs, high chance of dodge, and then when she gets to Super Saiyan 2, you just need that to perform another super. Like, they, they kind of uh, try to use the physical Super Saiyan 2 Kefla and like, you know, sparse her kit out over three transformations. Eh. Yeah, okay. I mean, she's, she looks like she's gonna be good, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in and, and definitely try to get her collector that I am. But I really want to test her out. Now, here's the thing. You look at her link skill. Uh, link sets, I mean. And they are really defined with the categories that she's going to be good with. And this is what I mean. So you have Battlefield Divas, which means she's on Peppy Gals, Universal Survivor Saga. Um, like here, let's pop it over. On Universe 6, right? So Universe 6, you know, you've got LR, Kale, and Khalifa. Um, you know, the Super Saiyan 2 AGO Khalifa, who's going to get an easy A. You've also got the physical Berserk Kale, she's going to get an easy A. So, Battlefield Diva Link will be good here as well, obviously, on Peppy Gals. Like, she'll link with pretty much everyone here. And this this team is pretty broken. And I kind of wish, instead of Rapid Growth, she was a um, Battlefield Diva Dokkan Fest lead. Because I don't know what other Dokkan Fest card they'll come out with that will, like, actually lead it. But, whatever. That's what they're gonna do. So Battlefield Diva, this it works here. Uh, same with Universal Survivor Saga. Pretty much, it's the same as like U6. Maybe you uh, throw in this Tech 18. Does she have it? Yeah, she's got Battlefield Diva. So yeah, the, there's a few options that that works there. Good, great with. Um, obviously, her other kit too is, you know, she's got turn out of power. Universe Six, Warrior Universe Six. So. You know, like look at the LR, LR Khalifa, like the Warrior of Universe 6 is another key, two key. Um, Turn of Power is a three key link, so with USS, um, U6, key is not going to be an issue, so that's fine. But then you look at the rest of her kit, um, you got Power Restored by God, which is, I want to say 2500 attack link. That's mostly a Patara um, link, 
right? So like uh, the Super Vegitos have it pretty sure. Um, yeah, 2500 when it's Super Attacks launched. Eh, you know, I mean, that's one of those links I could use in an update. Um, and then Fuse Fire, that's pretty much, you know, you, you put them with the uh, Vegitos on Tatara, you know, you're gonna, you can get those two key links there. So, like, she kind of, her key set, I mean, her link set works on all the teams. But when you start looking at the more broader teams, like, okay, Transformation Boost. Yes, clearly she'll be on Transformation Boost because she literally transforms. Besides Turn of Power, Warrior of Universe 6, Battlefield Divas, Fuse Fighter, like, what else does she link with? You know? Luckily, you've got Cooler as the lead who gives support passive before he transforms, when you decide to. Um, but, like, AGO Gohan, there's no linkage there. You know? Um, and, like, all these other villainous uh, extreme units, like, she won't really link with them either. You know, it's just like, so, I'm not saying she's bad, I'm not, and that's what I'm saying at all. It's just that because of her link set and the fact that she fits on all these teams, she's going to obviously be better on USS, U6, Peppy Gals, um, Patara, you know, those kind of units. But she really doesn't fit with, or she won't link well with, like, Super Saiyan 2. Let's take a look, Super Saiyan 2. She doesn't have Prepare for Battle, right? I mean, she'll link well with the LRK and Khalifa, but... Gohans, the, the Gokus, you know, I, there's no good linkage here, which is why it's important that on the last stage of her transformation, they give her the two key. So she starts off at eight key, um, even though she'll, you know, so if she sits on full power, that's another good one, full power, she doesn't have prepared for battle, so she won't link with a lot of Saiyans inherently for key. Um, Power Restored by God, so Fierce Battles are really her only attack link. You know, if you just look at the look at the, the list, it's just... Mm, she doesn't really fit here. She is in the category, but is there a cohesive unit that you could build around her in this category? You kind of have to stretch. I mean, you've got the Strength Omega. Who gives the two key and 40% attack? Like, that's good. Like, he's the glue that fits this whole thing together, so... I mean, you can't run without him. I mean, you could run the LR Goku Frieza, Terminator Power Link, 3 key. Key's not an issue for her per se, but it's just like getting everyone else off on the team to super attack. That's what, what I mean by when you analyze a unit's viability on a category. So, yeah, I'm not saying she's bad at all. I think she's a pretty decent unit. Like, Class B, when I put Class A as... Transforming Cooler, Physical Beerus, like those guys are, well, I would say, is Class A. Class B would be like Super Saiyan Blue Kyle Ken. Bardock, he's he's hovering in between A and B to me, but yeah, she, this is where I think she is. Again, to preface this, this is also with me just looking at her kit and not playing with it. Playing with her, she might be more fun. My, my, my opinion will change clearly from that. So yeah, that's Kefla. Um, I'm excited. I'll be summoning. There will definitely be videos. There's a collab I got coming up, which I hope you guys will enjoy. But yeah, there's that. Now let's look at the other units that are in here real quick. Um, so we got the Tech uh, Kale. I mean, um, Khalifa. She got her Awakening. And this is what it looks like. Attacking defense 8%. Chance to evade 8% per U6 Peppy Gal category ally. So this is what... Um, and then evade enemy attacks when there's a USS or pure Saiyans category enemy. So always evade them. A high chance to evade, what is it? So like seven, there's seven of them total. So 50-ish, 50, 56% 50, chance to dodge when you have a team of U6 and Peppy Gals, which pretty much you will, unless again, you try her on full power or transformation boost. Uh, perform an additional attack with the medium chance of becoming a super attack if there's an ally attacking the same turn whose name is Kale. I think, Truth uh, was saying that this could also include the LR. So it says LR Kale and Khalifa, that would include that as well. So uh, that's a pretty, if you pretty much make a U6 team of just Kale and Khalifa's and Kefla's, I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be okay. So she's really good. I mean, they've always been good just as the Zars, but now they're even better, you know? Of course, uh, the Strength Kale, who's awesome is getting her uh, awakening as well. Yeah, raise attack and defense. I think she raises it, uh, Khalifa did too. Yeah, so they stack infinitely. 
which is great. And attack and defense 8%, attack and defense 10% per pure Sains or Peppy Gale's category ally. That's actually pretty good. Perform an additional super attack when there's a USS or pure Sains category enemy. Okay. Guard, again, activated. That's really good. So that means you can tank. Um, against all attacks, if there is an ally attacking the same group, same as Khalifa. So you put her on slot one. And the fact that she's raising her attack and defense over time, like she's going to be amazing on, um, uh, you know, long events like Legendary Goku event or Infinite Dragon Ball History. This is where she'll excel. Uh, and I plan to make a video on that. So, okay. So there's that. And there's Avados, who I thought at first, I was like, isn't this the, the free to play one? But then I realized it was Int, which means it's a new one. Um, so here we got U6 lead, cool. Uh, it's the same as the free to play one. Attack and defense 60%, high chance to evade enemies attacks. So 50% chance to dodge, it's cool. U6, Realm of Gods, Siblings Bond, and Bond of Master Disciple category allies, attack and defense 20%. Now, I'm curious to know if this stacks. Um, if, let's say, think only one that would fit on multiple categories as many multiple categories would probably be super saint blue vegeta like realm of gods he's part of siblings bond and bond of master and disciple does he get just 20 percent attack and defense or does he get 60 attack and defense because he's not in u6 i kind of want to know um all right and then uh, vados randomly changes key spheres of a certain type of to Rainbow Key Sphere, if there is a U6 category ally attacking the same turn, self-excluded. So, pretty much you're going to run her on a U6 team, more or less. Um, Realm of Gods, I don't think there's a U6 person on Realm of Gods. That's a good question. Uh, okay, this is last resort, but kind of proved my point. Uh, yeah, and shout out to Dokkan Wiki. They're... Uh, very good at organizing information. Besides Vados, is there anybody else on the Realm of Gods? Uh, are you six person? Do you? I mean, no, no. I don't think so. So, putting her on Realm of Gods would mean she doesn't get this uh, other last part of her passive. Siblings Bond, there's a couple there. Bottom Master, yeah, there's a couple there too. So, I don't think. I think that's the only team where she doesn't get this part of a passive, which is fine. It's not a make or break thing, but uh, but yeah, that's the data download. This is the celebration, pretty much end of May, beginning of June, of what we're going to do for uh, what we're getting for Dokkan, for JP side. I'm excited. Um, definitely excited for these collabs and, and some videos I'm, I'm planning to make with these teams just to really showcase how, how she fits. Again, I think she's best on U6, USS, Peppy Gals. Um, on Patara, she's just a step down on that, but not by much. But everything else, like full power, transformation boost, Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 2, um, Last Resort, I think she fits on there, and you can make it work, but it's a little bit of a struggle compared to U6, USS, Peppy Gals, those other ones I mentioned earlier. So let me know what you guys think about, you know, who how Kefla is and all the other units. Is, um, is, she, a, is she as good as you think she would be? Is she disappointing just kind of mediocre what are your thoughts let me know in the comments below um, if you like this kind of analysis thing it's the first time i've done this uh, but i figured this would be kind of interesting because that's the first thing that came to our mind was she's good but i don't know if she really fits on all the or really meshes well with all the other categories and i thought hey why not why not explain it in a video so if you guys enjoyed this kind of thing let me know um I'll, maybe i'll do these for every new dokkan fest that comes out and give you my thoughts or are you tired of it and you just want to hear from Truth, Talon, all those guys who, who do the same kind of thing? Let me know, um, and uh, I'll, I'll listen to the feedback. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you all next time. Noller out.